I have a lot of points to address. You're looking at my outfit and you're thinking, Morgan, you look insanely confused. It's because I am. It's 65 degrees outside in December. I don't even know what to do. I have been fantasizing about the day for well over two years that I could film a video in my new bathroom when my new bathroom is somewhat functional. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not completely done. There should be like a bathtub situation behind me. There's no water faucets. There is a toilet. I've been anticipating this day for so long that I don't even, I feel like this is a lot of pressure right now. This is a lot of pressure right now. It's only 5.07 and it's pitch black and I didn't take that into account. <laughs> Oh, you're fucking kidding me. Is this game? This thing wants to run out after I've already done one eye. Not on my watch, King. Almost is like it's the perfect time and day for a December spectacular. And it's Christmas. This is my Christmas party. I'm not, I really thought that I would look so good doing that. I didn't. And I guess that's a good life lesson that. I don't know what the life lesson is. Sometimes life just sucks. I don't even know where to start, okay? I just got this whiff of inspiration today that I just wanna sit down and tell you everything about my life that I've left out for the past six to eight months. I've had time to recuperate my thoughts. I've had time to reel it all in. I feel like I could take a fishing lesson now because I've had time to reel it the fuck in. My top priority right now is getting this house done because I can feel, I can feel in my bones and my veins and my little itty bitty fake fingernails that maybe perhaps there is some sort of sense of stability on the way. And if you've been following along, you would know that I haven't had any sort of sense of stability for the past ever since I bought this damn house. I just wanna piece everything together to completion. It is almost so, so close to being done and I'm like thinking of the day that I can just wake up in my room and get ready in my room and not have my shit in a million different places and just have a bedroom of my own and like think my own thoughts. Anyway, happy December. I've been thinking over the past month. I identify as a YouTube girl, okay? If you ever wanna talk about YouTube, I am the person that you should call because I watch everyone. I keep up with all the girls. When I get onto YouTube, what is gonna make me feel all warm and fuzzy and cozy inside sends endorphins to my brain at a rapid rate is when someone posts a just super duper long video, one scene cut, get ready while they overshare about every single detail of their life. The Whitney Simmons, the My Fam, the Jacqueline Hill, you know, there is not a single type of person I love more than someone that will just bleh, bleh, here's my life, bleh, tell you everything. I never have a reason to get all prime and proper for these black tie events. That's what's holding me back is because when I see all these girls, they're getting ready for these magnificent events and they're like, get ready with me to go on my jet, to go to the NASCAR race in Japan while I'm meeting my boyfriend there. I literally, I literally love to go to my mom and dad's house and back here. I've never thought that I could do that type of video because I'm never fucking going anywhere or doing anything. So. I present to you my new series that I would like to call Get Ready With Me to go absolutely fucking nowhere. An exclusive. Now that I have a bathroom to get ready in, we can get ready and I can tell you all the things that I have been holding back for the past six months. I am finally ready. I filled up my balloon with top secrets and I am ready to stick a needle to it and let it burst. Here with me today. I have my trusted bag of secrets. Just to begin, before we get really into the depths of things, as of yesterday, Ryan and Shane had their babies. Ooh. I forgot the primer, and quite honestly, I never do the makeup without the sunscreen and the primer. This is what I mean when I say my life is in a million places, is that every time I go somewhere, I have to pack up all the things that I may need and oftentimes I forget things that I may need and then I go into a mini panic that I don't have all the things that I may need. Anyway, Ryan and Shane's twin baby boys were born the other day and we are very, very, 
very excited. I can't wait to have little matching swimsuits at the pool. Healthy, beautiful babies on the horizon out there living their best life. I was gonna say they're running around, but they're not. They're babies. They're literally like three days old. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and I like to use a lighter shade than what I would typically use for a concealer just to put under my eyes because what can I tell you girls and gays and they's and straights at home? <laughs> the past two years have fucking drained me. We're just gonna cover it up with some NARS Creamy McCream. A lot of people were asking about an update on ADHD medication because the last time I did a get ready with me video. I had mentioned that I was starting ADHD medication, but I left it really vague and I left it really blank, really up for interpretation. Why do people who desperately need help not go get the help that they need? Oh, probably because people are so goddamn judgmental about it, right? Just for a little backstory, I've been seeing the same therapist for three years. In my head, I'm always very hyper aware of how things come across, you know? So I've been super afraid to go to this lady and be like, hey, maybe I wanna try some medication because in my head I'm thinking, oh, she's gonna think that I'm a crackhead that's trying to finesse her for hardcore drugs, you know? But I first got diagnosed with ADHD when I was a little tater tot in school because my parents would go to all of these parent-teacher meetings and all the teachers were like, yeah, Morgan is, you know, really friendly and really fun, but she never shuts the f up. Poor memory that I remember from being in grades one through 12 is I wasn't paying attention in class ever. I'd get real comfy cozy and I would sit back in my chair. The teacher was talking about God knows what, couldn't have been a bother to me. And I was counting the ceiling tiles of every single classroom. People started picking up that something's a little fishy here and they would send me to the school counselor and the school counselor would be like, what's your favorite subject in school? And I'd be like, oh yeah, most definitely lunch. No question. Morgan? Yeah. Would you rather I come get you in a little while so that you can leave your car there then? Um, I don't think I'm gonna get ready for a while. Love you too, bye. Last year, I went back and got re-diagnosed and they were like, yeah, girly pops, A plus B is not equaling C in your brain. And I was like, yeah, you're so right, you're so right. I could get more into it if you wanted me to, let me know, but I feel like I've already talked about how Every medication that I've ever been on just has not done me well. I was on Cymbalta because they thought I had fibromyalgia, made me into a zombie that will never come back from the dead. Birth control was absolutely horrific for me. Accutane, I had the worst nightmares ever. So every medication that I've ever taken, I've gone to the other side of it and been like, wow, that was a very shit six months of my life. I got to a point in February, and I know that those of you that have very normal, beautiful functioning brains will not understand this. You'll just be like, why don't you just get out of bed and start moving? I felt like I was paralyzed inside of my own room and I just could not for the life of me get anything done. You know, someone could have said, Morgan, if you do this task today, we will give you a million dollars and I still wouldn't have done it. Like I just couldn't, I could not properly focus on any one thing to get something done. Okay? And well, that was fucking terrifying. There's ghosts in here. Did you know someone died in here? Because I did, but I don't think I ever told you that. Anyway, friendly ghost, super duper friendly ghost, but there's definitely a ghost here. So I asked my psychiatrist if I could possibly, potentially dabble in the idea of getting on an ADHD medication. I didn't know which one, I didn't have a preference. She referred me to a psychiatrist. I went to him and he's like, hey, girly pop, what's the problem? I was like, hey, sir, the problem is that I feel like I am paralyzed in my own brain and I can't for the life of me do anything. I could have a shark chasing me and I would just let it fucking eat me because I didn't fucking care. And he was like, yeah, so I've talked to your therapist and we think that this would work for you. They gave me to start Ritalin. I'm not a doctor, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's like the least, the least intense one. There's Ritalin, Vyvanse, and Adderall. And I was like, okay, listen here, Dr. Druggy, I am super duper sensitive to medication and I'm also super duper afraid of medication. So he started me off five milligrams twice a day, quite actually taking the dosage that they would give to a kindergartner. Then I get on and I'm like, hey everyone, I'm starting ADHD medication. And people are like, you f crack horror that is snorting Adderall for fun because of course you can't function without any stimulant in your brain. You're a caffeine crack whore. I'm like, oh my God, I'm taking 10 milligrams a day, but okay. 
Okay. That is what made me realize that perhaps I should have given a little context, but I will give you a review of my time on the medication anyway. I took it for about three months, the enactment of a day in my life when I was taking my medication. Okay, this is me. I'm dead asleep. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, <laughs> I need to take my medication right now. Look, take the medication. It will make you super duper focused, but the problem that I had with it is that I was getting uber duper focused on whatever I was doing when I took the medication. For an example, let's say I pop my little pill and I'm washing a dish. Once it hits in, oh, not only am I washing a dish, now I am washing every single dish that I've ever owned because I'm suddenly hyper aware that there is dust on every single dish. Not only do I need to clean the dish, I need to clean the inside of the dishwasher. There's probably a bunch of creepy collars in there. Okay, now I'm already here, everything's sanitized, but I might as well keep going. Oh, there's dust on the floorboards, that can't be good. I need to clean the inside of the washer. Meanwhile, I should be working, I should be doing things, right? And here I am, cleaning the top of the ceiling fan. Oh, but then 11.30 hits, medication wears off. This is me. Dead. I had to then take a 30 minute nap from 11.30 to 12.30, pop the second dose. Oh, I should go for a walk. I know I have a million things to do, but I should go for a walk. You know, I used to go for a little stroll around the block. No, now I'm speed walking. I'm doing it in sports mode. Like I am not fucking around. I think I'm training for a marathon now and I'm gonna walk 20,000 steps. Why? Because apparently I super duper love walking and it's the coolest thing I've ever done. This is awesome. What else could I do other than walking? Then I get back home and the medication wears off. And I, again, here I go. You know when you're playing Tetris and it starts to get all wobbly woozy? That was me when it started wearing off and then crash burn. 4 p.m. comes. You've taken both of your dosages for the day and I've had two like hypermanic states at this point. Neither of which that I did anything that I was actually needing to do. I'm telling you, you didn't want to be anywhere within a 10 foot vicinity of me once that medication wore off. The irritability and the frustration and the internal rage that I felt once that medication dissolved from my system Oh, <laughs> the, of the vast majority of problems that I've had in my life, anger has never been one of them. And it just made me insanely, insanely angry. So even after playing with the dosages a little bit, testing if I should take it once a day or twice a day, I just decided that, you know what, chief, this isn't for me. You know, sometimes you don't realize that something is happening until you hear someone else vocalize it. And then you realize, oh, that's not like a crazy thought in my head. That's something that happens to other people too. And I saw this girl post a TikTok about how at 4 p.m. she gets her ADHD meds have worn off rage. And I was thinking, oh, that is a side effect of the medication, not just that I'm an insanely angry, outraged, flaming Elmo. Also made me feel very robotic. I didn't have a sense of humor. I didn't have any like, haha, that was funny. Like I just felt like a robot doing my tasks throughout the day. I am not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist. You should not be taking any life advice from me ever, ever. And honestly, I think it's just a mixed bag because the reason that I wanted to start taking it is because I have a friend that takes it and just does amazing, wonderful, 100% changed her life. And so I am in no way trying to shame anyone that takes it or defer you from taking it because I think that it's just, Literally a dice. You're roll you're gambling. You might as well go to Vegas and put all your money down on one thing. You don't know if it's gonna win or lose until you actually do it. So, like I said, I have friends that say that it has 100% completely changed their life for the better. And then there's me throwing the TV remote at the wall because I'm so outraged in the middle of the day that I didn't get the inside of the dishwasher cleaned good enough that it just wasn't for me. My psychiatrist offered me to try something else. You know, he was like, you could try a Vyvanse or an Adderall, but I think that I just want to raw dog it a little more in life because maybe that's when I start to feel my best. This is the portion of the video where my personality really shines through and I forgot to bring another battery to the camera so we just have to go to a completely different day. The next question. The next question that I've been avoiding because I feel like there is a way to articulate this in the right way and sometimes I just don't know what the right way is. People have been asking me about the fact 
I have to use accent when I get a little too real on the emotion because sometimes it's just I just don't know how to address it face on, you know. I have to have little Russian alter ego to tell you the real sensitive question because Morgan sometimes doesn't know what to say. But people have been asking what I've been doing because I have lost I would say a decently significant amount of weight this year. Honestly, it's something that I avoid talking about in person and online because I just truly don't know what to say. And I know that it's a sensitive subject to me and it's also a sensitive subject to other people. So sometimes I just try to avoid like the plague. I mentioned once before that last year I'd gained a lawsuit at 35. In a pretty short amount of time, I gained 35 pounds, okay? When you gain 35 pounds in a really short amount of time, let me tell you something, girl, you can feel that, you can feel that my leggings did not even fit onto my body. That is how much I felt that. I know that some people don't like to hear about numbers or any of that. So if you don't like any of that, skip over this. But I got to a point at the beginning of this year where I was 240 pounds. Is there anything wrong with being 240 pounds? No. Did I feel like absolute shit, couldn't even look at myself in the mirror, was so ashamed to even be seen in person in real life by anyone that I know? Yes. I was having a hard time meeting up with people in real life because I was like, oh my God, they're gonna look at me and be like, wow, she really let his shit hit the fan when shit hit the fan. So once my little, law shebang ended, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, okay, girl, okay, girl, you've really let yourself go here and it's not good. Like I just kind of gave up. The way that I was coping with everything that was happening in that span of time was that I was stress eating chilies triple dipper daily. We all know that I will gain and lose the same 20 pounds until the day that I die. I've done it probably five times since I've started this channel, but 35, 40 pounds was a little more significant and I just really was having a hard time. Now people ask why I don't like Halloween. Oh, I've been scared shitless enough times in my life in the past year. I have been spooked to death. So I was like, Morgan, you know, Perhaps you need to take time this year to really focus on getting your health in check because let me tell you something, I couldn't even walk up the stairs. I am all for like, you are beautiful at every size. Every shape is a good shape. I don't like the version of myself where I cannot bend over to pick something out of the freezer. I don't like it. I don't wanna see it. It's not, it's not slaying. It's not giving anything. Go ahead, girl, give us nothing. Over the past six months, I've gotten gradually really, really into working out. And this is something that I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest with you all. I've had a half of a shot, I'm gonna be honest with you all. It's hard. Getting back into working out after you haven't worked out for a long time is like the most insufferably annoying, out of breath, I feel like I'm gonna die experience ever. So primarily, I've been going to rumble boxing and that's when I really started to see like a transformation. Half boxing, half weights. This is the secret. This is what people be doing to get all fitty titty. As a person who has gained and lost weight at least 10 times in front of an audience, this is my takeaway. When you gain weight, people are going to be a hell of a lot nicer. They're gonna give you backhanded compliments, but they're gonna be a hell of a lot nicer. You know, people are gonna be like, oh my God, queen, we love you so much. It happens to all of us. You're beautiful at every size. And I don't know how you're so confident. I wish I was as confident as you at your size. Be like, you have such a pretty face and you're so kind and you're so funny. Like, don't even worry about it. It happens to all of us, right? And you're like, okay, thanks. I feel like absolute shit, but thanks, Jessica. And then when you lose weight, people are like, oh, <laughs> oh, so you're abusing something. You're mentally ill. You're something's not right. You're addicted to working out. You have a problem. You have a problem. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I've been working on like a year long fitness transformation video. So I guess I can project my thoughts a lot more in that. But right now I'm probably the most physically in shape that I've ever been in my entire life but I'm also the most self-conscious that I've ever been, which is odd. It kind of like warps your perception of yourself because you see yourself every day, right? Because in my head, I look the exact fucking same, but when other people come up to me and they're like, wow, you look like you're really in shape. And I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. I don't, I don't know what you're seeing. I don't know what you saw before. I don't know what you see now. Like it's just a really weird, it's a very weird thing to process in your own brain. And here's my other thing that I realized is I think I maybe had a little bit of reverse body dysmorphia because now that I've lost a pretty good chunk of weight, all of my clothes that I already had fit. I think when I was 240 pounds, I thought I was like a size 10, 12. Oh, but girly pop, like I wasn't. 
I wish that I would have cared this much to take care of myself because I don't think you realize how physically strong you can be until you're exerting yourself in that way. Some creepy crawler comes up behind me and is like, hey, how you doing little mama? Can I get your number? I can pop them in the fucking jaw. I think more than anything that has been what I like the most about working out every single day is that I feel like if someone was coming up behind me to kill me that I could knock their fucking teeth in, you know? There's pros and there's cons. There's to everything, there's pros and there's cons. This has to be the most used makeup product of my entire life. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. And let me tell you, I, if I was a finance bro and I had to look at my return on investment, it would be plus green, 5,000%. I use this everywhere. Love. I know for a fact that I did this to myself. Everyone under the sun wants to know if Lucas is moving into my house. I... And I don't know, I don't know. People think it would be crazy if he moved in and I'm like, I think it would be crazy if he left. So every day when I do my makeup, I like to make a false little wing with a darker bronzer. Pretend that I'm gonna fly away into an alternate universe where I have a house to live in. I will soon. And then I won't have to fly away. The key to being makeup artist is that you fake it till you make it. If you have makeup and you have brush, you are now artist. And no one can tell you otherwise, so you... Do whatever makes you feel happy. You know what? You came here for the hot goss, I'm gonna give it to you. And this is something that I've never actually talked about. I feel like I'm emotionally moved on enough at this point into my life where I can talk about it without breaking down into an actual breakdown. But people, for years and years and years and years, have been asking if I'm personally still friends with Andrew and Garrett, and... <laughs> oh, man. I feel like when I talk to my therapist and she's like, what are the points of like deep sadness in your life? That is one of my points of deep sadness because even to this day, I still don't exactly understand that sometimes, sometimes you just have to accept that you don't get to understand things and you don't get to have closure on things and you don't get to know people's reasoning behind things. However, I like to live in fantasy la la land. Genuinely in my brain, I thought that we were all like, the best five friends that anyone could ever have. I loved and cherished these people so much and I just had the best time being with them and being around them. I was just young little 19 me, like do, 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 we're going to a hotel, that sounds fun. <laughs> I thought that we were all having the time of our lives. Little did I know that everyone was not having the time of their lives. I was the only one having the time of my life and you know what? I will keep it that way. There was two countries going on. Country that was ran by Shane and Ryan and there was country that was ran by Andrew and Garrett and I was the river in the fucking middle. Like, wow, I can see both countries. I can dip my hand on both countries. You know, like I might as well be the equator. I can touch both sides. I don't think I ever realized that there was such a divide, you know, because I loved and cherished Andrew and Garrett so much. And obviously I love and cherish my brother and Shane so much. I'm just the river in the middle. Like, wow, it's getting deep. It's getting deep over here. I've tried to reach out to them and I've never gotten a response or like an acknowledge that I still exist. I had conversations with both of them up until the drop off and it was never like, yeah, Morgan, we're never gonna be able to talk to you again and we don't like you anymore. And la, 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 la. I thought everything was fine. I thought everything was good. I thought everything was dandy. I thought we were all floating in our own little lifeboats, having a good time. And yeah, I guess I just always thought in my brain that I was good enough friends with everyone that if the two countries wanted to divide. I didn't know that that meant me. <sighs> See, even now, I guess that I'm just not a black and white person. You know, like I don't think I've ever looked at someone in my entire life and been like, never, ever, ever contact me again. I am cutting you off completely from my life and I never want to hear from or see your face again. Don't ever even think about me ever again, you know? I like to think that everyone that I've ever been friends with knows that they could always call me even if things went bad. And I would always answer once I have an admiration for someone in my brain in any sense of the matter that I always have like a little piece of them that I carry in my chest. I guess even now, when I think of Andrew and Garrett, I don't think of like, oh wow, they just kind of dropped me off the planet. I think of like, oh my gosh, I was always just enamored by like how fast Garrett could think of things, how funny the things that he would say were. I just remember being 
so close to them and just being wowed by everything they said and did probably because I was what 19 and they were in their 30s so they've had like a lot more experience in life than me I still watch everything they do I'm still curious I still follow I still have notifications on like not only will I watch their videos I'll give them a like you know that's what I do love about YouTube is that you can get such a close look into people's life me who's still curious oh I'm gonna watch every video I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna watch it from to back and it just makes me sad because like all the things that they do remind me of the time that I was friends with them, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you still have this shirt and we bought it when we were together and that just makes me think of you so much and oh my gosh, you guys are still laughing about the same things and you still have the babies. I feel like my brother and Shane have each other and Andrew and Garrett have each other and I'm God's strongest soldier. I can, I can handle it out here by myself, you know, but yeah, I watch their videos and I'm just like happy. I'm happy that they're still making videos together. I'm happy that they have each other. I'm happy that they seem like they're happy. I just take away the good memories, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, I guess we could move right along. My eyelashes are starting to look pretty bare. And maybe I need some mascara. One thing about me, I am a Too Faced chocolate collection girl. I use the bronzer, I use the eyeliner, I use the mascara. Too Faced chocolate collection, if you ever wanna sponsor me, guess what, you don't need to because I'm already doing it. This is the best shit ever. Best shit ever, I love it. I love it with my whole heart and soul. I will take away only the good things from my brown mascara and that is that I love it. As always, the crowd is asking for a Where's Trinity update and I have to tell you because she's not here to tell you that last week Trinity graduated, graduated from school. It snaps and claps for the woman. I know for 100% fact that Trinity will watch this so everyone go tell Trinity congratulations for graduating school in the comments. She did it for the both of us concentrate on this or I'm gonna get shit everywhere. Sometimes I think that I'm gonna be more excited for Reputation Taylor's version than I am gonna be for my own house that I've been waiting for for three years. You know, someone asked me, someone asked, someone asked, <laughs> someone got their keyboard out and they did ask me. Someone was like, how do you make friends in your 20s? And I was like, good God, girl, you are asking the wrong person. Because I have the same question all the time. And I feel like I see people on Instagram with these big groups of friends, right? And they're always going out and doing things and getting dressed up and hanging out with their big groups of friends. And I'm like, I don't know if I've actually ever had that. So, I don't know. I like to think that there's more of us that are sitting in our room alone on a Friday night than there are people that are out and about living their best life with a huge group of friends. And if you wanna know a story that will make you feel a lot less alone, if you're like me and you're a person that feels like you're alone in this world and you don't really know what to do with yourself because you're kind of alone in this world, Oh, I'll tell you a story. So if you've ever heard of Hunter Moreno, <laughs> he used to film a little bit for us. He's like so, so kind and nice and amazing. One of the best people that I met in LA for sure. He's just amazing. And now he's this big superstar photographer and he takes pictures of Selena Gomez and all these artists. Maybe like two years ago, I was in LA because I was going back and forth at the time. And I get a message from Hunter. He was taking photos of a tour for an artist that was touring and he was like, you should come to the show tonight. Tonight. We'll love to see you. You can bring a plus one. You can bring whoever you want. Come to the show tonight. <laughs> and I start looking through my contact list, you know, because I'm in LA. I'm like, I don't live in LA anymore, and I'm in LA. And then I realize, oh my God, I don't have a, I don't have a single person that I'm confident enough to reach out to and be like, hey, do you want to be my plus one to this thing? Then I'm just sitting in my bed all night thinking this is really fucking sad because I didn't go because I didn't have a plus one and I don't want to show by myself and stand at this concert by myself. Okay, eventually I move on, right? Couple months later, Hunter and this artist who he's touring with come to Colorado and Hunter messages me again and he's like, hey Morgan, we're in Colorado this time. You should so come to the show. You should bring a plus one. And I'm looking at my contact list again and I'm like, shit, shit. I still don't have a plus one. You know, like I have Trinity, but she's in school, she's busy. I have Maddie, she's having a baby, she's busy. And then I was like, wow, wow. Isn't it crazy that I have this online platform and I like connect with so many people on the regular, but I don't have a single person in my phone that I could reach out to to be a plus one to something that they don't even have to pay for? Options, crickets, 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 crickets. And then I was thinking like, is this something that other people experience or am I just like so isolated in my own world that I am missing out on like this vast majority of people that's out living their life with all these friends every week? I don't know. 
I have to use a freckle pen now because now that I had skin cancer once in my life, I can't go out in the sun and I don't get any freckles, so I have to use a fake pen. Oh, someone else asked about how my scar is healing. It actually is doing pretty good. I have one here and one on my lower stomach. I'll tell you, surgery, brutal. I think I should start a petition that you should be asleep for that surgery, but my little melanomy skin cancer, they got it out in the first swoop and terrifying, yes, but I have healed since then. I'm just waiting for the camera to die at this point because I know that it's gonna die. Just like my social life in my 20s. Sad face. <laughs> we're back in action. The last thing that I wanted to answer while we're hot and heavy in the questions is I saw someone ask about how do you find any, any sort of confidence. <clears throat> First of all, I'm gonna start with this. This is the MAC Boldly Bear. I have had this for so long. And I think that you can buy one of these and just be good for your whole lifetime. I wouldn't say I'm overly confident, you know, like you could still hurt my feelings for sure. 100%, anyone walking on the street could still hurt my feelings. And a good place to start, if you're not confident, you gotta figure out what you're not confident in, right? What could someone say to you that would hurt your feelings, right? Because if someone can say something to you that's going to offend you, that means internally you think it's true. Confidence 101, figuring out what you're not confident in and why. If there's something you can do to make yourself more confident about the things that you're not confident about, then you should 100% take steps to go there. But if there's nothing you can do about the things that you aren't confident in, then you just have to accept the things that you're not confident in for what they are. For example, my whole life growing up, I was insecure because I was always the tallest girl in my class. And granted, I feel like I'm not even that tall, I'm 5'10", but I used to be so sad about the fact that I was so tall because I wanted to be like these little cute girlies that are walking around at 5'2", 5 5'3", 5 because they just look so huggable and cute and squeezable and like, like a man could just pick you up and toss you over his shoulder and like me, I'm like, no one's picking me up. No one is picking me up, you know? Like if you try to pick me up, I'm gonna scream. Unfortunately, in my growing age of 26, I can't change how tall I am. I might as well just accept that I am way up here in the sky and learn to like that about myself. Another thing is, maybe this just is because I don't have a raging social life that I just learned how to love being by myself, but I could hang out with myself all day and never be bored and or lonely. I personally, and some people would say that this is controversial, but I think that I really am my own best friend because I'm like, I, I, there's no one that I like hanging out with more than myself, right? I always do what I want to <laughs> I always have the greatest ideas to do exactly what I want to do. And I feel like there's a lot that you can do for yourself if you can learn how to be alone by yourself, but not lonely in your own thoughts. But I think that could swing for both sides, you know, because I would say I'm super confident being by myself, but something that I'm insecure about on the other side, on the other side of the spectrum is that I really don't have a raging social life, you know? So you gotta give and take. Whatever you succeed in, you're gonna lack in another area, and I guess that's just the way life goes. My last topic, and I swear that this is my last topic. I feel like this isn't information that I have to share, but now that I know what I know, I am willing to share, because when I look at myself at 23, and I was looking at this house as a whole, and I was thinking, wow, this is gonna be such a great investment. This is gonna be such a good use of my time. This is gonna be such a good use of my savings account. 26-year-old Morgan could look at 23-year-old Morgan and tell myself one thing, was this, was this a good financial decision? Oh, 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 not a chance. I've seen comments before people being like, how the fuck is she paying for this? And to that, I will tell you, I am paying for this from a construction loan that I can, at the end of it all, add it onto my mortgage so then the two monthly payments just combine together. However, I am in so much debt at this point in my life that I could literally scream until my head pops off. And if you're looking at me and you're like, wow, how does this girly pop pay for this? I'm wondering the same damn thing. You know, this isn't me trying to complain because obviously, I mean, I've never lived at this damn house for the three years that I've owned it, but one day I will and I'll be super duper grateful. However, if I could go back in time and spend my money differently, would I have done so? Yes, and I think that that level of transparency is okay to tell people. You don't have to do, you don't, you don't gotta do all this. You really don't, you really don't gotta do all this. People could look at me and be like, well, you're just stupid and you just got into this whole mess and you bit off more than you could chew into that. I would say, yeah, you're probably correct. 23 year old me was full of life 
and ambition and big star studded dreams. You know, when I thought I could handle everything, I thought I could go to school, I thought I could run my channel, I thought I could build this house and I thought it was all gonna be easy peasy lemon squeezy. The girls are gonna slay the day away. You know, little did I know a semi truck of humbleness was gonna hit me going 55 miles per hour on the freeway and I'm not strapped in. I've had it handed to me. I've been humbled greatly by life in the past three years. If you want some real tea, why this has all been so goddamn annoying is because this was never supposed to be the project that it became, right? Like I had some little, things that I wanted to change and rearrange, but was it ever supposed to be a full gut and remodel of a house? No, no. And that is how I got into a giant fiasco. Little did I know, oh, once someone tears your house to shreds, even if you didn't want them to tear your house to shreds, you're gonna have to pay to get it put back together if you ever want to live in said house. It was just a tumbleweed that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And have I learned a lot at this house? Yes. Have I met a lot of wonderful people at this house? Yes. Have I had a lot of memories that I will cherish until the day that I die? Yes. Am I also greatly traumatized? Yes. So there was a lot of life to be lived here. You know, there's a lot of experiences for a house that I've never fucking lived at. But would I tell you that this was a good financial decision? No, no, I would not tell you that. I would never in a million years tell you that. And if I could tell you anything, I would tell you to pick a place to live where you're going to feel emotionally stable. Pick a pick place, place to live, to live where, you're where you're going, going to, to feel, feel emotionally, emotionally stable. stable. Please, if it's renting, if it's buying, if it's living with your parents, if it's living with a friend, just pick a place to live where you are setting yourself up for the highest chance of emotional stability and financial stability. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Life is confusing and life is hard, but life is also beautiful and funny and I'm just here to have a good time, you know? Like, I think I used to have a lot more oomph in me and maybe I'm gonna get my oomph back when I feel a lot more stability, but for right now, 2023, a one more month, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get by right now, okay? I hope you know that if you feel like no one in your life is rooting for you, that I am always 100% rooting for you and I love you so much. I am so tired at this point and I hope you <laughs> enjoyed my first ever episode of Get Ready With Me To Go Absolutely Fucking Nowhere. If you like this, let me know and I could just do this all the time. I really could. I, I love nothing more in my life. And I also love nothing more in my life than this and you. And just, I hope you have the best Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, whatever the hell you wanna live, laugh, love about. I hope you have the best rest of the year ever. And I love you so much. Okay, that's the end, bye. I would just like to know my great level of disappointment that I went through all of this, didn't even think to put on eyebrows. Didn't even think about it. Didn't care. Wasn't a bother to me. Did I need eyebrows? Guess not. Guess not.